Welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about the Remnix Linux distribution. And I'm just going to provide you with a high level overview of what it is um, and how I typically use it. I'm not going to get into any tools in this specific demonstration in order to keep the video a little bit short. And as you'll see in a minute, the, the distribution actually contains quite a wealth of tools, which is why it's an important distro. Now, first things first, if you want to get a copy or, or at least follow along in the video, then I am at the remnix.org website. So you can go there directly in your browser or, of course, type it into your favorite search engine. You should land on a page like this. And I recommend downloading and really accessing all of the resources around Remnix directly from their website. The page will start with a little blurb about what Remnix is. Um, what is Remnix? Well, I guess if you're not familiar, it's probably why you're here. And Remnix is a very popular Linux-based malware um, distribution. And so it's going to have a lot of the, not all, but a lot of the very common and popular malware analysis tools um, and reverse engineering tools already installed, already configured. So it can save you quite a bit of time if you just grab this distro and use it as one of your main malware analysis machines. Now, I absolutely use Remnix as one of my main uh, virtual machines for analysis. In fact, I usually use two different machines, a Windows-based one, and that will be based kind of loosely off the Flare VM. I've got another video on my channel that discusses the Flare VM. So if you're not familiar with that, consider queuing that one up after this one. Um, and then Remnix here is the other. Now, it'll have a lot of the tools already installed and already configured, and so it saves you the time and the hassle of having to go and really deal with the you know, all of the independent installations for those tools, uh, resolving any dependencies, and maybe even performing some of the configuration. So in general, you would grab a distribution like Remnix because it saves a bunch of time. Now, when we scroll down a little bit, we'll get to the area of the, the home page where we can download or actually get Remnix. And the first option is to just download a virtual machine. The second option is to add Remnix to an existing system. So we're going to do both of these in this video. I'm going to start with the download. Before we get there, I do want to point out that the documentation is also going to be a more important resource here for getting started with Remnix. If you're familiar with Kali Linux, um, Kali organizes all the tools by their purpose, you know, information gathering or web application assessment. Whereas Remnix, when you get into the VM, you don't have that same level of organization. So if we go to the documentation link, you'll see towards the bottom here, there is a button to read the documentation and it'll take you to a page that um, provides again, of course, all the documentation that you would expect covering not only the installation, but also how you can download it and then getting into, as you can see on the left-hand side, all of the tools that are available as well as links to their documentation. So we'll get into that once we get into the Remnix VM. For now, let's go back to the home page, and we'll download the virtual appliance. So these are OVAs. Um, they will be relatively large files. Although, generally speaking, downloading Linux-based virtual machines are usually a bit smaller than Windows-based virtual machines. If you're using pretty much any virtualization software other than VirtualBox, then you can go ahead and just grab the general OVA by clicking either the box link or the SourceForge. And then this will download an OVA in which you can import using your preferred virtualization software. I typically use VMware, so I've had no problems downloading and then importing this OVA using VMware. There are a number of options out there. And so if you're not familiar with virtualization software, do take some time to read the documentation here, or I would suggest just using VMware or VirtualBox. So the second tab provides an OVA for VirtualBox. And I have personally had issues in the past in importing OVAs based off of either what I produce them with, that is the virtualization software that I produce them with, or what I'm trying to import them into. So that's likely the reason for the VirtualBox OVA, the specific one here. Uh, again, similar process, you can download from Box or SourceForge, and then it's always a good idea once you download those OVAs to generate a hash and compare the hash with the value that's posted here. That just ensures that your image hasn't been tampered with either during the download process or even from the sources that you downloaded it from. Okay, as I mentioned, a uh, number of different virtualization uh, software and options out there. 
properties just provide a few options here to get you to get you through that process if you're not familiar and once you have the OVA imported you should be able to start it and then that will bring you right away not only into you know starting the virtual machine it'll automatically log you in and start you with a desktop session which we'll do here in just a second do take note, I actually didn't even know what the Remnix username and password, well, I knew the username. I didn't know the password for a while, never had to use it. It's, a, it's actually quite rare when I'm using Remnix that I have to use a password, but um, it is worth taking note that the username is Remnix and the password is malware. Okay, let's get into that virtual machine. Okay, this is going to be your default setup. Once you launch Remnix, it'll automatically log you in and then it'll open up a terminal for you by default. The terminal, as you can see, the username is Remnix, and it's from this location then that you will likely interact with the, with the vast majority of your tools. A lot of the malware analysis or reverse engineering tools I find to be command line driven. If you click on activities and then show applications, you will see a launcher that provides you with shortcuts to some of the more, well, to some of the graphical based applications. But you can see there really are not that many, and this certainly doesn't cover all of the tools that are available inside of Remnix. You'll also see that there are a couple of icons that are, are pinned to that launch bar. Uh, the terminal, Firefox, which is the web browser, and then a file explorer, file utility. So we'll go ahead, I'm going to launch Firefox. And under the install the distro section, I'm going to select keep the distro up to date. Uh, one of the first things that I generally do after setting up a virtual machine, or in this case importing an OVA, is to go ahead and run updates or upgrades. You can read the difference between the two. Um, essentially, what upgrade will do is ensure that all of the tools and any new ones that have been added to the distro are now incorporated in your instance. The update command is um, really just updates existing Debian and Python packs, so Debian packages and Python modules. So upgrades probably the more important one because it's really those tools uh, oftentimes that you want to make sure you have you know the latest versions and any new ones that get added to the distro. But in either case, it doesn't hurt to run both. And once you have your system up to date, that's typically then when I create a snapshot. And that snapshot helps then because if I have any issues down the line, I certainly have had issues with different distributions in you know running updates later on and it actually breaking things. Or oftentimes when I'm performing analysis, I once I'm done with that analysis, I go, you know, I revert the system back to a previous known clean state, a state where I had no malware or hadn't analyzed any malware on that system. Now, that's a little more important to me with a Windows VM because I tend to run the malware more often because I oftentimes am looking at Windows-based malware, whereas Linux, that's not usually the case, but still, it helps to keep things a little bit cleaner. It helps me to keep my analysis a little bit more organized. Of course, one of the drawbacks with that is if you, you know, revert back to a snapshot and you don't forget to copy off any artifacts or anything that you needed. Um, that's been about the, the major issue for me is forgetting to do that and then just losing some data that I have to go back and, and recreate. Okay, the next section then is to discover the tools. And these are gonna be organized by the purpose they serve. So for example, if we select examine static properties, PE files, this will show all of the tools that are available to analyze PE files. Now, this can be a bit overwhelming because there are quite a few, as you can see, there's quite a few tools here just for an analyzing PE files. But keep in mind that because malware authors oftentimes target Windows, the Windows operating system, those executables are portable executables, PE file. So it makes sense that there's quite a few tools on this platform. Fortunately, there's a little bit of a description here, although I would say maybe not the most helpful. For example, perform static analysis of suspicious PE files. Well, duh, <laughs> that's kind of why we're looking at the, the tools here. Um, but you can you know, use that description as well as the link to the website in order to hopefully put together a better understanding of what the tool's performing or what it's doing for you. Of course, if none of that makes sense, or if you'd rather, I oftentimes just jump right in and use the tool. 
uh, you can you know go ahead and, and let's say we wanted to run string sifter. Well, um, it may not be obvious what the name of the utility is. Now, uh, I would I would assume that all of the executables are going to be um, you know added to your your path variable. Uh, we can take a look at the path environment variable by echoing the you know dollar uppercase path, and that'll that'll print out all of the locations that the terminal will look in order to run the the executable program that you're attempting to run. It also helps with your autocomplete support. And so one thing that I'll oftentimes do is if I'm looking for you know a program called String Sifter, I'll start typing in, let's just assume it's the actual name of the program is String Sifter, and then hit tab twice. And you'll see that it'll begin to it'll show you basically autocomplete entries based off of the number of characters that you've typed so far. So strings and strip, those actually don't look like the right candidates. Now we could go and poke around these different directories where the you know where your terminal is going to look uh, in order to find those executables or executable scripts. But I think in this case it's probably easiest to just go to the website you notice that it linked to a GitHub page and a lot of projects in my experience will have pretty good instructions on their GitHub page in the readme for how to get started. And it looks like that the instructions here for running this from a CLI command line interface is to run the flare strings or it's, it's called flare strings. So now if we go back and let's just type in flare, we've got flare and flare strings, right? And now we can get help information by using a dash H and we're ready to start to use that application. Uh, kind of conversely here, OLE dump is another utility that is very commonly used to analyze um, any sort of office document that contains or may contain macros. So for the analysis of OLE files, um, and you can use the which command to figure out where that is located. Right, so in this case, user bin, and if we look at our path again, we have that as one of the entries. Right, so if we go to user bin and just list the contents, you'll see there's all sorts of executable programs here, as well as executable programs and or scripts in those other directories. So it doesn't really make sense to try to you know try to parse through and figure out what all of these utilities are doing. Some of them are going to be just part of the system utilities. Uh, many of these are going to be from you know the Remnix distribution itself, but it's going to be you know oftentimes hard to know exactly what the name is and what the purpose is. So I would recommend that if you're particularly new to malware analysis, you 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 get a distribution like like Remnix in order to help you use the tools. You don't really learn the distribution. Um, we just it, it happens to be. A distribution using Linux, so you have to you you know learn some of the ins and outs of working with a Linux operating system. So if that's something new to you as well, there is a bit of a learning curve there. But once you're familiar with that, then again, the purpose of a, of a distro like Remnix is just to provide you with the tools. So now you're learning, you know, the process of malware analysis or reverse engineering, and figuring out what tools can help you with those tasks as you come across them. So here you have all of the different options then that you can begin to explore to try to understand, okay, I'm, you know, let's say you come across a PE file and here's all the different utilities that can help you analyze PE files. Now, keep in mind that the, you know, the number of, of applications here in Remnix are certainly not all of them. And I don't mean to give that impression if I did, and that yes, I use Remnix, but I oftentimes still find myself downloading additional scripts, additional utilities. And so it's a great place to start because oftentimes it does have the stuff I need. I don't have to bother setting it up, but that doesn't mean that it's going to have everything. So don't limit yourself to just what you find on Remnix either. As usual, I get a little bit lengthy, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video here and we'll talk about adding Remnix to an existing system in the next video. So until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any feedback, comments, questions, please leave them. Uh, comments are open and I look forward to hearing from you. Until then though, I'll see you in the next video.